Okay, before we move any further, I just want to uh, emphasize something. So we have talked about um, program memory addressing uh, where we have used LPM instruction. So uh, we can say LPN, RNZ, so LPM, RN, Z, which is actually pointing a, a load from a program memory, but that's also pointed from the Z register. And we also had the uh, LPM, RN, Z plus, which is a post increment version of the um, same instruction. So the byte of data is read into the RN register from the code space pointed by Z. This is what this instruction is doing. And I have demonstrated that the, when the least significant bit is zero, it's the uh, low byte of the program memory. When least significant bit uh, is one, it's the high byte of the program memory. So uh, in order to uh, read the low byte of each location in the program memory, we should shift the address of that location one bit to the left. So for example, uh, in order to access the low byte location of, let's say, we have got 0B, 101, okay, so we should actually uh, load Z with, in this case, 0B, 0, Now that means we have to do a shift. And in order to read the high byte, we shift the address to the left and we set that bit to zero, uh, set bit zero to one actually. So like we have said with the assembler operators, we can use uh, um, the arrows so that we can shift. So let's make an example just to demonstrate that LDI, ZH high dollar sign 100 shift it 1. So, in order to read the low byte of address 100, we have to shift it 1 to the left. And uh, we do the same thing for LDI ZL low. Address 100, shift it 1. This is how we can uh, read uh, the address 100 low byte. And then we can say LPM instruction R16Z. So this is how we can read the low byte. And in order to uh, read the high byte, all we need to do is LDI ZH high. So what we can do is we can actually or we shift the address first and then we set bit zero to be one. So that in order to do that, we can use or one. And I do the same thing for the low byte. Again, the address 100 shifted by one, then fourth with one. And this is how we can use um, the LPM instructions and how we can actually get access to the low byte and the high byte of the program memory. Okay, so, so far um, we have seen, uh, we have seen that AVR has a maximum of eight megabytes of code or program uh, space and 64K of data memory space. So we can use code space uh, to uh, store fixed data. We can actually use uh, code space to store some data in there. And in order to do that, there's a special instruction 
uh, or assembler directive, which it's called .db, which is define constant byte. So .db instruction reserves memory resources in the program or EEPROM with the label. And uh, it used to define 8-bit fixed data. And then it's widely used to allocate ROM program memory in byte-sized chunks. And numbers can be in decimal, binary, hex, or ASCII, as you can see the examples over here. Um, Program memory is two bytes, where uh, .db directive allocates byte size chunks. So if you want to build two bytes, you have to assign another .db for that. And with .db directive, the first byte goes to the low byte, the second byte goes to the high byte, and third uh, goes to low, and so on. So for odd number of ROM, .db assembler uh, directive, it allocates uh, even by placing zero into the high byte. So when you're storing something, um, if it's in the all way, all re, uh, it's only in the low byte, the high byte will be filled with zeros. So you can see the examples over here that we can define decimals. We can define a binary, X, ASCII characters, and also ASCII string. These are all valid. Now, I want to do a simple example related with .db before we move further on. I'll write the question over here as well. Assume that we have burned the following data into the program memory, program ROM of an AVR chip. Give the contents of each ROM location starting at address 500. Okay, so let me write what is going to be stored and then we'll talk about how these are going to be stored so dot org 500 where we need to start from data one so you can define a label for it and then dot db one eight five three decimal And then data two dot db twenty eight. That's also decimal or one c in hex. Then data three dot db. We have got zero b zero zero one one. 0101, that's binary, 25 in hex, and data 4, dot db, 0 hex 39, that's already in hex, and let's say I want to change the program memory address to dot or 510 and data 5 will be dot db y as a ASCII character and then data 6 dot db Two zero zero five, and these are ASCII numbers and data seven dot db. Let's change the address again. 
Dot org five hundred and sixteen and dot TV we can write a screen uh, hello Ali Okay, so this is what is uh, written in the contents of the uh, program ROM of AVR. Then we are going to see how these are going to be stored in the uh, as a data. So let's say we have got address low byte and high byte. So at starting at address 500, now the low byte, we have got 0, 1, and the high byte, we have got 8. Then 501, low byte is 0, 5, and the high byte is 0, 3. Then 502, low byte is 28, which is 1C. Now the high byte, as we don't have anything in that line anymore, filled with zero, zero. Then 503, low byte is three, five. High byte, again, it's filled. I'll say as a comment, filled, filled, 504, it's an hex number 39, and it is also filled. The high byte is filled. Hey, high, let's write high byte filled to complete two bytes. Then we don't have anything over here, it goes up to 510. Then the low byte is ASCII Y. ASCII Y is 5.9. You can find this in ASCII table. Again, it's filled. Then 511. It's going to be ASCII 2, which is 3, 2. And then 0, 3, 0. 512. Then 3, 0. And then 5 is 3, 5. So these are written. The ASCII codes, they are written with 3 in front of it, if you do remember when we were doing BCD ASCII. So then we have to... 510, 512, then we have to jump to 516, which we have got. Hello, Ali. So you can find the app from the ASCII table. I'll just write them 48, 65, 517 is 60. Again, 6C, 518, 6F, 20, and then 519, 41, 4C, and 520, 49, and 00. So that's all. Um, we can also uh, create a lookup table using .db directive. This is also uh, possible. And by using a lookup table, we can actually check if we have uh, got the data and we can retrieve it and do something else. So these are all possible.
which I want to solve a simple example related to that as well. And then we can carry on from the slides. Okay, so each of these data based on their addresses are stored as a low byte and high byte in the program memory. And if it is uh, one byte, uh, the second byte is filled with zero zeros. That's what you need to know. Okay, so the last example about these. Write a program to get the x value from port B and send x square. This is x square. I cannot represent that. Let me go here, but maybe I can try this way. Yes, x square to port C. and assume that pb3 and pb0 has the, let's do it from pb3 to pb0, has the x value of 0 to 9, use lookup table instead of multiply instruction. So how are we doing this? It is quite important. And what is the value of port C if we have 9 at port B? Now what do we understand? What do we understand from this? That we are going to get the x value from PB3 to PB0. And let's say if it is 0, 0 square, 1 square, 2 square. So it's going to be between 0 and 9. Okay. And we can create a lookup table based on the solution of this uh, arithmetic operation. And then we just need to retrieve it each of those based on the given input B. So let's start. Let's include the dot include M128 definition file dot INC. Now starting at address zero let's start with ldi r16 zero now our port b is going to be an input and port c is going to be an output so that means i have to set this to zero so out DDRB R16, so port B as input. Then LDI R16 0 hex FF out DDRC, port C is going to be an output R16, so port C as output. Now we have got the port directions, then um, the tricky point over here is we have to use indirect uh, memory addressing so that we can uh, get where the it is going to be stored and then we can retrieve the data from it. So let's say LDI, let's use Z high. And we have to define the table. You can just use the uh, table. So I'll just say LUT. And it's going to be shifted. 
one to the left. So over here, I can write the comment as ZH is going to be high byte of address. Okay, and LDI ZL is going to hold LUT if one the low byte of that address. And then what we need to do is we have to read port B to get the value of X. So I can just use in R16. In order to read port B, I have to read pin B actually, which is the pin of uh, port B. So read from port B into R16. So we have got the value in GPR now. Now we can mask the upper bits because we just need the low four bits. So in order to do that, I can say and I R16 0 hex 0 F mask upper bits and then add. the value to the low byte of Z. And now, the important thing over here, LPM R18, so we have the value of Z. So this is actually getting the value, get X square, from the lookup table and send it to port C R18. And we just need to repeat this for the new data L1 and that's coming from L1 over here. And of course, when we have got these in the program memory, we can just say dot org where you want to store in the program memory zero hex one zero. The name of the table that I use over there is LUT, and I define the values. So zero square zero one square. One, two square is four, three square is nine, four square is sixteen, five square is twenty five, and six is thirty six, forty nine, sixty four, and eighty one. So zero to nine, their squares are stored in the lookup table. Now, if we repeat, the ports are initialized, then the register Z will point to the uh, lookup table, the low bytes and the high bytes when shifted, and it will read from the lookup table, and uh, we get the addresses from there, so which is X10. Um, Pin B is going to read into R16, so we are going to get the X value. And then this X value is uh, masking the upper bits. It's three, so when we add it, we spe specify which Z low byte are we going to read to. Okay, and then that will be read. And then what we can do is we can get the value this is Z, not Z H. We can get the value of X square and send it to port C. That's all you need to know about it. Okay, so if we 
carry on from the slides. There is another example over here, which uh, what we need to do is analyze the following program and annotate comments to explain the purpose of each line and then rewrite it using the post increment version of the LPM instruction. So if I can copy that, okay, so I have to reorganize it so that we can Let's do it this way. I'm just going to write it next to it. Okay, so starting with the LDI function. So the first instruction is telling that I have to initialize port B to be an output. Or maybe before that, we can say start flash ROM at zero then set port b to be an output this is what is showing over here and then the low byte of my data to zl is going to be address Low byte of my data is over here. So my data, I think the address is not shown over there. It should be 500. So low byte is 00. zero. ZH is going to be 500. So 50. Sorry, 05. If you want 500. Okay, so normally dot org 500 is written there. And then that's low byte, that's high byte. Then what we need to do is load. So LPM instruction is load R20 with character, the first character, which is U. pointed by Z register and then send it to port B. Then we increment ZL which is going to be R30 equals Zero 01, so it was zero, 00, now it is zero 01. And LPM R20Z, so then we load, it's the same instruction, but the second character is S, so that will be loaded. And then it will be send it to port B. And then R30 becomes zero 02. And then repeat the same thing again. So LPM instruction once again, we will retrieve A. So that A is going to be written and it has to be sent it to port B. And then R jump here means stay here forever. So that's how we can analyze this um, code. You can also write the hex numbers of those. That's also valid, but it's USA. So US and A is retrieved one at a time, and then the address is incremented. Now, it says uh, rewrite it using the post increment version. Now, as everything is happening over here and incrementing it, we can just use LPM. Maybe I can show that here. So by getting that part, LPM and incrementing and so on, I can just say LPM R20 post 
equals increment z and then send it to port b r20 and then another one lpm r20 z plus out port b r20 so this three lines is reduced to two lines this three line is reduced to two lines and so on the last one has to retain because there is no increment anymore so this is how it is going to be modified Okay, one more example. It says use .db assembly directive to store the message the promise of world peace followed by null character starting at ROM address 500. Write a program starting at ROM address 0 to bring the message into CPU one byte at a time and place the byte in SRAM location starting at 140. Okay, in order to do that, at the beginning I can say, I can write it over here, dot .org 0 hex 500 will have uh, my data, which is going to be dot .db and <coughs> the promise of world peace followed by a null character means after the string there is a zero zero is always the null, ca null character so we burn this data into the memory program memory location hex hundred then I can point to the program memory zero where I need to start uh, writing my code and I'll say LDI ZL low my data address that we need to get, uh, which is uh, R30 is 00, zero which we get the low byte. Then LDI ZH high my data. And that will be R31, which is going to be, as it is shifted, it's going to be 0A. So the high byte address. So because when you are shifting 0101, when you shift it to the left, it is going to be zero one zero one zero so that becomes a okay so that is what it is then we repeat ldi xl it's going to be low so we have to define the ram locations as well zero hex one four zero and LDI XH high 0 hex 140 as well. So the low byte and the high byte of the RAM address are 26. Is 40, which is low byte of RAM address and R27 is 0, 01 which is or 1 high byte of RAM address 
So now I have to retrieve uh, data from the point that I'm Z register is pointing to. So I will just move these in a little bit. Now here I can say LPM R16 Z is pointing to. So this is going to be read the table, then increment Z. And then we have to compare if we reach to the end of the table to the null character. So CPI R16 0. Compare R16 with 0. And if it's if we reach to zero, then we have to jump somewhere to the end. I'll just say end. If it's not, uh, we have to carry on. So store x plus r16. So r16 value that we have retrieved will be stored in x. The RAM address. So store R16 in RAM and increment X. So I can also write a comment for this exit if end of string. Then once we stored, we can go for the next and we just say R jump again, or let's say R jump L1, and that L1 has to be retrieving again the next uh, location uh, data, and then it just carries on like that. And end will be somewhere here that it's R jump end. So if we reach to the null character, we just jump directly here. If it's not, store the x value into the uh, store the value that we received from the table into uh, x which is the ROM location and then re uh, go for the next one so that was uh, programming example five now one other uh, assembler directive is macro assembler directive. Now dot macro is actually uh, giving you a definition. So you can define a small uh, routines like initializing a stack and this is without a parameter or you can define a subroutine or a short uh, command uh, which you can say load IO but you can parameterize that with two parameters so parameter 0 and parameter 1 based on the which way you want to use in the instructions you can use these macros and you can call it as a init stack you can call it call it as a load IO and when you say load IO, if there are parameters, you have to specify uh, what will be your parameters. So parameter 0 DDRB over here, parameter 1, it's going to be hex FF, or parameter 0 is port B, and parameter 1 is x55. So with that ability, now we have seen in the uh, previous chapter that we can use uh, bits instructions related with the IO registers, set bit, clear bit, skip bit if it is set, skip bit if it is clear with the conditional ones. Now similar branch, uh, similar instructions are also exist for the general purpose registers like uh, SPI, A, B, so set B bit B in IO register, CBI, clear bit B in IO register, skip, bit store from register, 
RR to T, which is the T uh, is in the status register, bit load from T to RD. Skip next instruction if bit B in the register is cleared. So you can use these specific registers. So I can show you a simple examples of that. BST and BLD can be used together to copy a bit from one register into another using temporary bit T, which is in the status register. So when you say BST, uh, you are actually setting uh, or storing the bit tree from R17 to the T flag. And BLD, you are actually getting the value from T flag to bit 5. And some other instructions like clearing, set uh, chosen bits in a register RD, so 8 bit mask value. It's like an or I and uh, clear bits. K okay, is an 8 bit mass value. It looks like an end I over there. And this is how bit addressability can also be used.